a lot of people, I'm going to say pretty much all of you guys probably have some form of a major streaming service, right? Whether it's Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, Peacock, Paramount, Max, whatever, you name it. Now, there's this thing called churn, right? And most of you know what it is, but for those of you who don't, the term churn kind of basically refers to somebody who subscribes to one of the streaming services to watch something specifically, and then they unsubscribe until another show comes around on it that they're interested in, and then they'll resubscribe. Obviously, what the major subscribers want or what the major streamers want is for streamers just to subscribe and stay subscribed. But according to a new report, more and more people are becoming churners. Uh, this comes to us from the outlet Next TV that write the following. One third of premium SVOD users are quote unquote serial churners, users who actively manage their video entertainment services, frequently signing up for and then quitting subscription streaming platforms, according to new data published by Antenna. The research company said that the quasi-loyal cohort has been steadily expanding since 2019, when its whimsical rank stood at only 10% of users for 10 identified premium brands, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, Max, Apple TV+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, Peacock, Showtime, and Stars. So, back in 2019, they said about 10% of the subscribers to those major streaming platforms were churners. 2019, 10%. That number, according to this report, has gone up a staggering amount. Take a look at this. So the red bar is the churners. In 2019, 10% of major streamers, subscribers churned. In 2020, that went up by 50% to 15% of streaming subscribers were churners. In 2021, it went up again substantially to 23%. In 2022, it went up to 29%. And Rob, year-to-date 2023, they're saying 33%, one-third of all streaming subscribers do what's called churning. Rob, from 2019 to 2023, that represents over triple the amount of people who used to churn now churn triple. And you got to wonder at that rate, what is the churn rate going to be in 2025 and 2026? Are we going to be seeing in 2024 and 2025 that the people who churn the streaming networks is going to represent like half of all streamers? And then what does that also tell us about what people are looking for in their major streaming platforms. Now, I'm a little bit different. My number one criteria for what I look for in a streaming platform is library. Like, that's one of the reasons why I love Disney Plus, even though they frustrate me a lot. But one of the reasons I stay subscribed to Disney Plus is because of the library. I love being able to go in and watch any Pixar film I want at any time. Any Marvel film, any Star Wars film, the Disney classics, all that kind of stuff. That's one of the reasons why I stay subscribed to Netflix. Yeah, they crank out a lot of new stuff, but they have an incredible library, not only of their own stuff, but a huge collection of other content as well on there, always there all the time. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Vessi. Now, you guys know I'm not exactly the most fashion conscious guy in the world, but I love a great pair of shoes that are comfortable and I can wear almost anywhere. And growing up in Canadian winters when my feet got wet a lot, waterproof would be nice too. Enter Vessi. They make the claim that they're not just fashionable and super comfortable, they're also waterproof. Now, you guys remember, when I got my first pair of Vessis, I put them to the ultimate waterproof test. I actually stuck my foot in my pool, my feet stayed dry, and the shoes stayed dry. Incredible. And they're the most comfortable pair of shoes I ever owned. Well, that made me want another pair. So I got another pair of Vessis that look great and just equal that world-class comfort that I got from that first pair shoes. They are absolutely my favorite shoes that I've ever owned. Imagine your favorite sneaker style supercharged with waterproof technology and unmatched comfort. No matter how you like to stay active, Vessi has the shoes for you. Trail-ready high tops, effortless slip-ons, and classic court shoes, all with a waterproof twist. They are just as comfortable and stylish as your favorite sneakers, but even more versatile. 
So guys, if you're anything like me and you want the most comfortable pair of shoes that look great, that you can take out hiking, wear to work, go to the gym, or walk through the water and snow, go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get yourself a pair today. Go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get 15% off your order using the code Campia. But Rob, I think this churn rate they're talking about is pointing to us that there are a lot of users who are looking for new what's new right now and i will subscribe when it's something new is there and then i'll leave until something interesting comes back along rob are you surprised to see this more than tripling number of churners in just the last couple of years do you think that's going to continue and what do you think this number tells us about the current state of streaming and those who subscribe to these streaming services well, I, I think what's really interesting is you brought up the idea of library catalog. To me, that that is the biggest draw. And like with Disney Plus, it has a very finite amount of things. I mean, yes, I love Star Wars and yes, I love Marvel, but I've seen those movies a lot. And I've seen most of the Disney library growing up throughout my life. What I want to see is something I haven't seen. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I mean, Apple Plus, Disney paramount plus uh peacock they don't have the depth of the library that say netflix does right and netflix is casting a wide net internationally there's all kinds of great documentaries there's all kinds of international shows i've never seen before and that's what i'm looking for and i think people realize okay everything i've seen i've watched on whatever streaming service so they can get rid of them and i think that churn is going to be a big part moving forward and to me, John, I hate to say it, but Netflix is the one streaming service that I'm always finding some nugget that I've never come across before because they drop so much stuff. I'm like, oh, here's a I just watched this interesting documentary called The Blue Zones about people who live longest and where on earth do they live longest? I wouldn't have found that. But Elizabeth's like, we should watch this. I'm like, OK. <laughs> and then I got sucked in and watched all these episodes and i wouldn't have found it otherwise but i think i think that's going to be the future moving forward is churn is just going to be built into as much as they're going to hate to hear that the streamers are going to rely on that they wanted that revenue stream to be even every month and grow and now right. they found out that that's just not the case people are going to leave and they're going to come back how do you think this will affect because the first thought that comes to my mind is if I'm a, an executive at one of the major streamers, if that churn rate grows to say 50%, which just a couple of years, yeah. again, in 2019, it was 10. If it grows to 50%, I got to imagine if you're a streaming executive, you're looking at, well, we have to then reprioritize our pipeline maybe with how much original content that we create, which Rob creates a problem because you and I have talked about this before, is that the economic model of these streaming services kind of limits them for how much new content they co they are constantly creating and making. But if their customers are going to be in a sense of churn, you know, Apple might actually be the best example of what might be the best model moving forward because Apple doesn't create uh, a lot of stuff, right? Apple doesn't create a lot of stuff, but what they do create is they create a limited number of, of new shows and stuff like that. But it feels like they're, when they create a new show, it feels like there's a 90% chance it's going to be awesome. So yeah. I've subscribed to Apple TV Plus, And even though I've gone some stretches without watching something on it, I've never really canceled my Apple TV Plus because I always know like whether it's going to be the next shrinking or the next severance or the next morning show or the next, I mean, Rob, they're loaded with really good stuff. So I wonder if there's going to be a balance somewhere there between the quantity, 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 quantity play that Netflix does, which, which works in some ways or the Apple limited, but high quality or something like, you know, a Disney plus or, you know, cause Disney plus for every one premium thing they release, like a new Marvel or star Wars show, they release a lot of lower tier things that fly under most people's radars. Where do you think that magic spot is going to be more the Netflix model, more the Apple TV plus model. If you're an executive, which way do you go? 
Well, here's the thing, John. You brought up Apple Plus. They're six ninety nine a month. Yeah. You know, and I think that there's a big difference between seeing a six ninety nine a month. Uh, somebody's taking that out of your checking account as opposed to twenty bucks. And if you have three or four streamers that are charging you fifteen to twenty bucks, it's going to be noticeable. But Apple Plus seven dollars. That's a drop in the bucket. You know, that's a that's two big coffees at Starbucks. <laughs> and I, I know it's you're talking the difference between say less than ten dollars or less than twenty dollars, but that's that's going to be a big consideration for people, especially with inflation going up. And I think it really comes down to people are going to start asking themselves, what is the best value for my money? Yeah. And and like you said, whenever Apple puts something out, even the shows that I haven't loved that I wanted to love, like Invasion, Invasion's beautifully made. Like if th there is a house style to Apple shows and they look great. I mean, they're not, they don't spare any expense. No. So, it, it, I mean, while we haven't had the Sopranos yet of Apple plus, maybe their shows are HBO quality and that's something worth paying for. And they're only charging six ninety nine. And I think it's really going to come down to look, look what happened with suits on Netflix. Oh Yeah. There's a show. I think the streamers are going to look back like it, they just announced, John, that Leave It to Beaver is going to get released on physical media. Yeah, I heard that. I could <laughs> I could see a streamer, but I could see a streamer picking up Leave It to Beaver and it become becomes kind of a hit a hit retro watch for people because kids today didn't grow up seeing it. It's such a innocent show of a different time. I could see a 50, 60, 70 year old TV show suddenly becoming all the rage you know people making leave it to be for tiktok videos so i think there's going to have to be a change because nobody can afford to make brand new programming hmm. they just can't so how are streamers going to going to compete now and the suit success shows you don't have to only have new things you can bring back old things and if they're appealing people will watch and and having a show like suits is a lot less than making another 10 episodes of something at $10 million an episode. Well, I mean, a lot of people still forget that even with all the new stuff Netflix makes, the majority of their views is aggregate content. Like the majority of their views comes from shows yeah. they never made, whether it's stuff like Suits or older TV shows or it's acquired stuff. And like that, like Peacock, the thing I watch most on Peacock is still Parks and Rec and The Office, uh, Seinfeld, yeah. Friends, you know, shows like that make up a big thing and maybe that could play into it moving forward. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.